about this video from Off the Crib Ministries. It was a great video with many good points. It has just been announced that one of the Olympics' largest sponsors has pulled out all advertising over this. Seaspire, the sixth largest wireless provider to the USA, found the mockery of Jesus Christ so disrespectful that it can no longer be associated with the 2024 Olympics. But you will not believe what Elon Musk tweeted about this too. Unless there is more bravery to stand up for what is fair and right, Christianity will perish. Is Elon Musk right or is he wrong? He's right, because if we as Christians stand back and let the whole world laugh at our saviour, no one's going to get saved. If we ourselves do not take our message seriously and stand next to the Lord Jesus Christ and be prepared to be counted and count the cost, no one is going to believe us when we say Christ Jesus is the most special thing. He is the most precious person in the world. So right now, today is not the day to be silent. Today is not the day to be a doormat. Today is the day to speak up and say, this is wrong. We do not agree with this. And we stand with Ceasefire. We stand with those who say, no, we will not watch the Olympics this year because you are mocking our saviour. And he means far more to me than a bit of sport, than a bit of entertainment. Clearly there was... Yeah. Moses chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Never uh, an intention uh, to, to show disrespect to uh, any uh, religious group. Uh, on the contrary, uh, I think that Thomas Jolie really tried to uh, really intend to, to celebrate community tolerance. That was uh, his word yesterday. And uh, looking at the result of the polls that we shared, uh, we believe that this ambition was, uh, was achieved. If people uh, have taken any offense, uh, we are, of course, really, really sorry. Listen to me. God is no man's debtor. And I'm going to ask you to do something right now. I hope this video reaches many, many people. And if you're in the USA right now and you're ready, you're coming up to the end of your subscription and you're ready to switch wireless providers, would you please, please consider switching to Ceasefire? They're not sponsoring me to make this video, but I want to... Something that's hit me really is this. These guys will have lost millions for what they've decided to do. Millions of opportunities, millions of eyeballs to pull out all advertisements. And yet they're doing it because they are saying, no, the Lord Jesus Christ is more precious. So as Christians, let's get behind this company and let's support them. If I was in the USA, I'd support them. So if you are, please do consider this. And guys, listen. It's kind of remind me, Ceasefire, this decision they've made at the 2024 Olympics reminds me of a huge decision that a man called Eric Little made at the 1924 Olympics. Eric Little was a Christian man and he was a sprinter. His best race was the 100 meter sprint. But when it came to the day when the heats were all put on, all the dates were put on the calendar, he found out that the date that he was going to run was on a Sunday on what he believed was the Lord's Day. He had a deep conviction about this, that this day should be special. This day should be different to all other days. And whether you agree with that principle or not, you've got to admire him for sticking to it and for saying, no, I will not run on a Sunday. I will not run on the Lord's Day. Now, because he was a gifted athlete, well, the organisers said, well, why not try yourself at the 400 metres? Now, Eric Little had no hope of winning this by human standards. As I said, he was a sprinter. On the day of the race, his friend sent him a little note and it simply said this. In the old book, it says, he that honours me, I will honour, wishing you the best of success. So, Eric Little, he entered the race, and what do you think happened? He won. He broke the record, and he got a gold medal because he honoured the Lord God. Now, I don't know what this decision that Ceasefire has just made, I don't know what it will affect, how it will affect them in business, but I hope it's a similar story to Eric Little, that the Lord honours them for standing up, for, for making a cost, and saying, no, the Lord Jesus Christ is more precious. But what about you and me? What are we going to do when we see the whole world mocking our Saviour? Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. What are we going to do? Are we going to count the cost? Now, I'll be honest with you. I love the Olympics. In 2004, I went to the Olympics in Athens, and I loved watching the swimmers, basketball, all of it. I love sport. 
But this year, I've got to ask myself the question, will I watch it after everything that I've just seen? And I think if I really do ask myself deep inside, I don't think I can in good faith support what they have done this year. Because I do believe a message has to be sent out to these organisers that this is not acceptable. But am I the only one who finds this really saddening? I mean, for years, the Olympics has been known as wholesome, something that all the family can enjoy. The Apostle Paul in the Bible, he uses many analogies talking about the Olympics, because obviously in Greece and, and in that time in Europe where he was witnessing, the Olympics was huge. It's always been known as something that all of us can get alongside, we can all cheer for our country, and we can have a great time. But here's the crazy part. As the candle of our timeline gets thinner and thinner, as we get into these last, last days, suddenly all the things that were once wholesome, even they will become evil. And we as Christians are going to become more and more separate from this world. And soon there's going to be very, very little that we can take part in. Because as the enemy rises up and up, as these days get shorter and shorter before the Lord Jesus Christ returns, things are going to get a lot worse. The Bible says things will wax worse. So you and I as Christians need to be prepared. Whatever the cost will be, we must stand up next to the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who went to the cross for our sins. And we must seek to emulate our Saviour, who was willing to die for what was right. But I can hear exactly what some of you are saying. Some of you are saying, but Joe, come on, why do you always have to take everything so seriously? Why do you Christians always have to feel like, oh, woe is me. The whole world is, is pointing their finger at me and laughing at me. Why are you always doing that? Well, I can understand why you say that. And some of you will be saying, this was just art. But the question does need to be asked. At one time, maybe you could use that argument. At one time when Madonna did it, it was quite, you know, different. It was quite avant-garde. No one had done it before. And everyone was like, wow, this is art. Now, obviously, I don't believe it was ever art. I believe there was a bigger agenda going on. But right now, it's become so common that everyone thinks we can laugh at the Lord Jesus Christ. We've had Little Baby, we've had Little Narsex, we've had Little Uzi, we've had uh, Madonna, as I said, Kendrick Lamar. You say Kendrick Lamar wasn't mocking the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, only one Christ can wear a crown, and a diamond-encrusted crown of thorns. That is not anything that the Lord Jesus Christ would want one of his disciples to do, is wear a glorious crown saying that I'm Christ. When you have not died, you have not shed in the death that the Lord Jesus Christ died. So suddenly it's not just art that one or two people are doing just to, to get attention. No, all of the artists are coming together. In fact, so many people are doing it right now. Dare I say this? It's becoming rather quite boring, you know. Can you not think of anything more creative than laughing at our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ? And yet, why are they doing this? Well, the answer is simple, because the one who runs the music industry, the one who runs all of entertainment, the enemy, the evil one, he has it in for Christians. He does not pick other religions because he knows other religions will not save you. He knows other religions will send you to the place where he's going. But only Christianity, only the saviour who went on a wooden cross and died there and rose from the dead, only he can save. And I've got a friend uh, called Josh who I recently met. Just eight months ago he became a Christian and he told me, he's been coming out with me in the open air, we've been doing evangelism, and he told me, I was actually watching your videos before I was a Christian and that question that really led me to the Lord Jesus Christ was this, why is it always Christianity? One of my close friends, a man called Vinnie Commons, who's also an evangelist, he has a very interesting way of putting it. He says, you know, suppose that there's a great big boxer like Tyson Fury. Does Tyson Fury, who knows he's got challengers like Usyk or AJ, if those guys retire, if, let's just say, I hope this doesn't happen, but they're removed from the earth, does Tyson Fury worry about AJ anymore? Does he worry about Usyk? No, because they're gone. So why is it the atheist? Why is it the man who's secular in Paris, the organisers? Why, if Jesus Christ never existed, if he's just a fairy tale, if he's all a load of nonsense, why are they always aiming at him? Why is it always against him? I think you've got to say the answer is clear, because Jesus Christ really is the Son of God. And I want to know, Will you put your trust in him? Now, I don't mean to sound rude, but please, again, just use your mind now and think about this. You know so much thought, so much intention would go behind this opening ceremony of the Olympics. Organisers would have sat around a board and talked and had different plans, different sketches. What are we going to do? And they chose very intentionally to mock the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Why? Because Jesus Christ is Lord, and they don't like that. The world hates it, because man has loved darkness rather than light. And did you notice all of this activity? It happened in the dark. That's when the evil one acts, when everything's gone out, when the lights are dim. My dear friend, do you love darkness over the light? 
Will you come to the Lord Jesus Christ because you realise there is a target on his back? Christians are the ones that everyone's shoving to the side and they do not get an opinion. And you're starting to wake up. You're starting to see the truth because there is only one way. And the Son of God, whether you think he's a fairy tale or not, your sin is not a fairy tale. And on the cross, all the wrongdoings you've done, all of those evil things you've done were laid on Christ. And there he died in your place as a substitute for your sin so you can be forgiven. And then this righteous one, he was buried. He was put in a tomb like many, many people. But he did something that no man has ever done. And that's what makes him special. That is why the evil one does not like him because he is different to all men because he is God in a flesh the Lord Jesus Christ rose from the dead and that is why you'd be very wise to put your faith in him because he can conquer your grave and give you eternal life so yes this is very sad what has happened but at the same time it just shows it just shows the world there is one savior and I hope that this has got your attention today and you too will find Jesus Christ and make him your Lord and your savior and you too will speak out against all of this wrongdoing towards Christianity now, if you would like to hear more about this man, Eric Liddell, one of my least viewed videos on my YouTube channel is all about him. I really want you to see this because I think he's a very special person that we should consider. So uh, go and check it out there. I think it should be just there on your screen. And if you haven't yet subscribed and you liked this video, you found it helpful, please do subscribe. We'd love to see you again. God bless you all. And thank so I'll put a link to his uh, Eric Little video in the description box. I'll share this scripture with you, John 15. Jesus said, these things I command you, that you love one another. Jesus also did say, if you love me, keep my commandments. And he said in John 15, 18, if the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. He that hateth me, Jesus said, hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now they have both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the father, even the spirit of truth which proceedeth from the father, he shall testify of me. And you shall bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. Just want to share with you this day, take a stand and don't back down. God bless you. Jesus loves you very much. Check this website. He died for you.com. Number four in letter U. And let's pray for a move of the Holy Spirit to bring conviction of sin. You know, today they hate Jesus. They hate the Holy Jesus. They hate the glory of Jesus. They hate the glory of God. They hate the holiness of God. So let's pray. Check this website. Pray at 316.com. God bless you all.